wisdom, worship, and the Word. This is Church Without Walls, an uplifting message to encourage you on Enter His Gates. Well, good morning. I'm Jeff Williams, the senior pastor at Portico Church in Porter, Texas, and we currently meet at Sorters Mill Elementary School there in Porter. And I'm honored to bring you today's message, and I hope that it's a blessing to you today. I'd like to talk to you this morning about being significant. Uh, Many times in our life, we search for significance. We look for purpose and for a reason for us being here. And the Bible has a lot to say about being significant. But also, and more importantly, being significant in who we are because of Jesus and in Jesus. I'd like to start with a quote by an editor, a popular editor for CNN. He made this quote, said, At its core, Christian life is set of sacred traditions linking generations of sacraments and Sunday school lessons, youth ministry, morals, and family gatherings sanctified by prayer. It's an unbroken circle in the words of an old hymn. And while this quote may be an accurate reflection of what people in the world may see in Christianity, the question we have to ask, is it an accurate definition of what Christianity should be? We're not to be just full of traditions and, and busy work on Sundays. We're here to be significant, to be a significant reason and purpose for being on this planet. And the Bible has a lot to say about that. We're not just carrying on traditions for tradition's sake. We're here for a reason, and we have a job to do, and that job makes us significant. You see, religion will take significance away from people. It'll base it on its practice and principles. But a relationship with Jesus Christ places significance on each and every one of us that are believers and followers of Christ. We are very significant, not because of who we are, but because of who we are in Christ. And sometimes we get wrapped up in religious thoughts and trying to figure out how can we do certain things or keep up a certain act to be considered okay or significant in the eyes of God. But I'd like to share with you the words of Jesus when he was talking to a group of religious leaders and a group of people who were trying to keep up with religious statutes. And he said this, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourselves for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, Jesus is talking to a religious group of people, people who are trying to keep up with religious ideas. And what he's using is uh, is an illustration from the agricultural world. A yoke, which is just a large piece of wood that fit over the neck of animals that would pull, be used as a collar to pull heavy loads around. And Jesus is saying, you've been trying to carry around the weight of religion, the weight of trying to keep a certain standard of rules that was never intended for you to keep anyway. And he says, this is hard work and it makes you weary and burdened and tired. And he makes this promise and he makes this statement. He says, come unto me. If you're weary and burdened, come unto me and you will find rest. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's because it's his. It's resting on his strength and not ours. In Galatians chapter chapter 2, verse 21, Paul makes this statement. He says, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. He makes this idea very plain to the church in Galatia who is struggling with false teachers who've come in and tried to teach that grace is not enough, that you have to continue trying to keep the law. And Paul is saying he will not set aside the grace of God because the righteousness of the law can is no such thing. Righteousness cannot come from the law and even makes that point. If it could, then Christ died for nothing. He says, you foolish Galatians, Who has hypnotized you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was vividly portrayed as crucified? This is in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. He's saying, how can you be taken away from the grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ? This idea that Jesus was crucified for us has power, it has impact. He even says in verses 6 through 7 of Galatians 3, he says, Just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness, so understand that those who have faith are Abraham's son, He's making this point that if Abraham believed, then all that also believe would be considered Abraham's son. This is a great promise to people. It's a great promise to a group of people who's trying to keep up with the law, saying that, hey, the promise of redemption was made to Abraham before the law even existed, but also another group of people that was outside of the law, 
outside of what God had promised the Jewish nation to those that are Gentiles. He says in verse 8, the scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and foretold the good news to Abraham saying, all the nations will be blessed in you. What Paul is referring to is the idea that when God promised Abraham that he would make him first a great nation and then second, that that great nation would be a blessing to all nations, that he was including the result that would come through that nation and that result was the fact that there would be the written word of God and the living word of God come from the nation of Israel. The written word of God being the Bible that we have now that tells us the good news, teaches us of the grace of God, and then the one who made it all available, the living word of God, as John chapter 1 proclaims, is Jesus Christ himself. Now, the application of what we're looking at here is kind of summed up in verse 9 of chapter 3. It says, so those who have faith are blessed with Abraham who had faith. You see, faith, not religion, faith and grace and a relationship with Jesus Christ makes us significant. Again, not based on who we are, but based on who we are in Christ. And this is great news because it's something that religion cannot offer. Religion cannot offer you significance. Maybe this morning you're listening to this message and you're thinking, you know what? I just can't be good enough. I can't get everything in order. I can't get all of my my stuff together. Well, let me share some good news with you. You don't have to. You just have to simply come to Jesus Christ in faith. He's the one that paid the way for you to know God, for you to be accepted by God. And it's simply just by placing your faith in him, in the work that he did. He lived a perfect life and he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death on the cross. And yet he rose again, showing that he had power even over our worst enemy, that being death. We can place our faith in him this morning. Right now, you can place your faith in him and you can become a believer in Jesus Christ who knows what grace is all about. If you're already a believer, so many times we still get caught up in religious thinking. We think that we still have to do certain things that will make us even more acceptable to God. And we base that on an outward motivation to be accepted. But it doesn't work that way either because just as much as we needed grace, the grace of God, For salvation, we need it every single day in our life for sanctification, our journey in life to become who Christ wants us to be. So I'd like to encourage you, give up on religion and focus on a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let his love, let his presence, his power and his peace be that internal motivation that would bring about an external change to the world around us because you are significant. You're significant in the eyes of God because of who you are in him. You know, in the word significant, there's, there's two words hidden in there, and it is I can. And what I'd like to share with you are just a few statements that you can take with you and realize that there are some things that you can do because of your significance in Christ. And the source and the power and the strength for those come through the power of Jesus Christ. First of all, you can say to yourself today, Because you're significant in Christ and because we're not worried about religion, but more about enjoying the relationship and living out that relationship with Jesus Christ, you can say this this morning, I can be authentically honest about who I am. Not only that, you can say, I can be free from religion or any other thoughts of humanity that thinks that that says or tries to paint us into a picture of saying we have to be this, this or that to be accepted by God. The only way we're accepted by God is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. You can also say this morning, I can be open about my brokenness and embrace true community in Christ. You see, one of the great benefits of being significant in a relationship with Jesus Christ is that you can be involved with other people who are significantly in a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is the beauty of the local church. This is something that you need to be a part of, to be fully engaged in so that you can have strength, so that you can have accountability, so that you can have support from other believers as we're all sometimes struggling and sometimes striving and sometimes even thriving in our journey to become who Christ wants us to be. You see, community is what church is to be all about. 
You can go and you can be open about brokenness. You see, religion tries to say, no, you have to have everything together. But because of a relationship in Jesus Christ and being with others that are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we can all be honest about our vulnerability and our brokenness because we are broken. You see, Jesus came to save those that are broken, those that realize they're broken. And we can do that in a community that is the local church. And then another thing, another statement that we can make, an I can statement that sometimes gets overlooked in our day, and I want you to hear it. It is this statement, I can, because of my significance in Christ, because of the relationship I have with him, because of the grace of God, I can ruthlessly defend the grace of God and yet remain humbled by it. You see, religion sometimes feeds our ego. Sometimes it makes us think that we're better than other people. But you see, the grace of God always keeps us humble because we realize that there was nothing we could do to earn achievement with God, but that Jesus had to lay down his life and rise again for us. You see, the grace of God reminds us that we're broken, that we're sinful at times, and that we need a Savior even in our daily walk with our Savior. So we can be humbled by it, but we can also ruthlessly defend it. Paul did this throughout his epistles. He writes about this throughout the letters he writes about in the New Testament. He ruthlessly defends the grace of God because he cares so much about people having hope in Jesus Christ alone. We can do that same thing. We can be humble and we can speak the truth in love, but we can ruthlessly defend the grace of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what we are to do because religion will not help us. It's a hopeless system, but a relationship with God and being internally motivated by the grace of God is what changes lives and changes the world around us. Another I can statement that you can say today is that I can be different. I can be mended. Even though we were broken, Jesus Christ came to mend the brokenhearted. He came to fix our lives. Peter wrote it best when he says, by his wounds, we are healed. You see, we can be different than who we used to be. We can be different, and we can be who God wants us to be. We can do that. You can be significant because you can be different. You can be mended. And then we can also make this statement. I can believe and enjoy the love of God, grow in his word, and stand in his strength through the work of Jesus Christ. That's an important statement for us to understand. You can believe and enjoy the love of God. You can grow in his word. You don't have to be a scholar, but by spending time with God and finding those that can help you, people at your church, your pastor, spiritual mentors that can help you grow in his word, you can also learn to stand in his strength. You see, that's what we need. We need to be strong in his strength, not in ours. And you can be busy and victorious and successful in doing the work of of Jesus Christ because he's the one that does the work through us. So I hope that you'll remember that Jesus's yoke is easy and it's because he's the one carrying the load. So whatever you're dealing with today, whatever it may be, people's opinions, religion, trying to keep up with so-and-so or whoever that is, you can give up that load today and you can turn that burden over to Jesus Christ and take his because his yoke is easy. His burden is light. Are you weary? Are you tired this morning? Are you tired of trying to do the things that you think you should do? How about you just come to Jesus? How about you just give your life to him, submit to him, and strive to make him famous by being motivated by his grace? Because his yoke is easy, his burden is light. You can come to him and find rest, and I hope that you do that this morning. Thank you for sharing this morning with me. And I pray that God will bless you this week and that you'll be drawn closer to him as he draws close to you. I appreciate you for your time and listening to this message this morning. And I pray that God would be glorified through his word. And if you get a chance, check out our church's website. It's porticochurch.org. And we are in Porter, Texas, and we strive to make God famous. And again, my name is Jeff Williams. I have the privilege to pastor there at Portico Church. And I pray that we would all strive to make God famous in this world that is searching for answers and hope through him. You have a great week and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.